we're talking about transgenderism, talking to kids about changing their sex, and even in a red state like Oklahoma, we had to fight back against these establishment groups that truly believe they own the kids. I mean, that they believe, well, yeah. and, I, and I put them on the spot and go, listen, I got four little ones. Do you think that there's anyone in this world that loves my kids and understands my kids better than my wife and myself? That is an absurd position that you guys are holding. But I mean, it is prominent in the, in the left-wing circles. We're at a point now where you have a lot of parents, uh, a lot of Americans that are ignorant. They don't seem to understand that according to not just our traditions, but our, our founding documents and our laws, the parents have authority over their kids. And we saw it happen. Uh, this is what elected Governor Yunkin in Virginia. When, when you have people that see the government as more important to our kids than parents, which I gotta tell you folks is, is amazing and deeply sick. And so we need to bring back you know, common sense on this issue. So it is great, as I said, Ryan Walters, to know that you are where you are in Oklahoma and that you understand this stuff. It's a really, you're, it's a breath of fresh air to think that you're doing that. Well, and, and you know, you just said that very well. And, and because of where we are today, 40 or 50 years ago, you might not have needed statutes that clarify parents are the rightful overviewers of their kids. God gave kids to a mom and a dad, not the government. So their rights are to be protected in every aspect of their kids' education. You wouldn't have needed that 10 years ago. This is like, this is the most recent insanity. When I, when I heard this, there's certain things you hear and they just like, they spin you upside down. It's kind of when I heard people say like, we need to defund the police. <laughs> I thought, what? Like, that's the dumbest, craziest thing I ever heard. What are you talking about? When people have to assert that parents have rights over the kids, you know how dark things are. I remember I was at some event. Uh, Rick DeSantis was talking and saying, like, you know, I'm for, you know, girls in high school only competing against other girls. And we're all cheering. And I thought, what are we cheering? Like, how crazy that someone needs to say this. But that's basically where we are. So, of course, I applaud you for this. But it's just... It's kind of amazing that, that we've drifted so far that we have to assert the, the most extremely basic things. You know, and, and I mean, and, and frankly, we have to institutionalize these things through, right, through rules, through laws, because the reality is we passed a Parents' Bill of Rights here through my board, and immediately we had associations, the Counselors Association. Um, we had folks from our schools that came out to fight the rule and say, well, you know, I mean, really, we need to be the ones making a lot of these decisions. You know, there's a lot of bad parents out there, and really, we need to be the ones that make the call of should they be exposed to. I mean, we're talking about transgenderism, talking to kids about changing their sex. And even in a red state like Oklahoma, we had to fight back against these establishment groups that truly believe they own the kids. I mean, that they believe. Well, yeah. and, I, and, and I put them on the spot and go, listen, I got four little ones. Do you think that there's anyone in this world that loves my kids and understands my kids better than my wife and myself. That is an absurd position that you guys are holding. But I mean, it is prominent in the in the left wing circles today. Well, I, I the first time I smelled this, I'll never forget. Probably maybe 15 years ago, my daughter, uh, we had to take her to a hospital here in New York, and some high-handed nurse figure kind of treated me as the father, kind of like incidental, like, well, let me talk to your daughter. And I thought, like, I, I, you know, I, I'm ready to choke somebody who's gonna come between me and my child. It is deeply offensive that anybody would even suggest that parents are a threat to their children. I mean, there are parents that are a threat to their children, and all of us would agree that's like, you know, that's when, when somebody has to intervene. But the idea that uh, people who are confusing our kids on the transgender issue, that they care more about our kids than we do, that they know better than our kids. Again, this is brand new, and it is, to cut to the chase, folks, it's basically communist. In other words, it's basically where the state says, we own your kids. Hitler says, I own your kids. I will teach your kids to love the Nazi state, to love the Fuhrer. And if you disagree with your kids on that, I will teach your kids to hate you. That has never come to our shores. It is here now. And Ryan Walters, you're one of the brave folks 
standing up against us. So again, God bless you and thank you. Tell us specifically what's going on right now in Oklahoma. So a couple of things we're doing, and again, we, we put out a rule that said you have to tell parents about any kind of sexual conversation or transgender conversation. You can't have them with kids. You can talk to a parent, but you're never going to talk to a kid about these things in the state of Oklahoma. And we recently had a superintendent send out an email to parents saying, actually, you know, still uh, we saw this rule that, that Ryan Walters pushed through, but we're still going to be the ones that ultimately make the decision of if we're, we're going to tell you first or not. And we let them no, absolutely, you will not. You will always tell the parents first. You are not going to sit here and try to do an end around us. But that does show you even in a red state, you have superintendents and woke administrators that are even fighting back against the most common sense rules. So we're going to continue to enforce that. you got to protect parents' rights. And the other thing that we're doing, Eric, that I think is so important in the, what we're seeing in the world today is we are going to bring God back to school. Folks, I hate to interrupt, but I just don't want you to miss any of the content we're putting out on here. We've just got some amazing stuff. So would you do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button so we can make sure you don't miss anything? I promise you, great stuff coming up. Hit the subscribe button. Thank you. You know, it started in 1962 where we saw the Supreme Court weaponize the federal government against Christians. They struck down any kind of school prayer and since then, we saw them continue to move and not not only drive Christianity from our schools, driving prayer from our schools, they, they created atheism as a state-sponsored religion. That's really all they want to allow in our schools. And we absolutely have to protect a student's right to pray in a school, a teacher's right to exercise their free expression of their religious beliefs. And the other thing is we're going to make sure our kids understand the Judeo-Christian values this country was founded on. And again, this is history. I know the left hates history. They want to pretend like we're enlightened now and that all of American history was evil and racist. But we've got to get back to a point where our kids understand the core principles of our Constitution, of our Declaration of, of Independence of this country, and understand that the founders were very clear. Our Judeo-Christian values were crucial in making a, this experiment we know as America work. Uh, I talk about this all the time. I wrote a book called If You Can Keep It about this very issue. And I myself didn't quite understand how it worked until I wrote that book. And when you understand it, you think, my goodness, I drank the Kool-Aid. I thought that secular is somehow neutral. No, ladies and gentlemen, there is no way you get all the values we have in the West, liberty, um, the protection of minorities, all of that stuff is biblical. There's no way around it. It's not my opinion. Uh, the abolition of slavery came because of serious Christians. The civil rights movement came out of the churches. All the stuff that we say, well, we like this stuff, comes out of scripture. It comes out of Christians bringing those things into the public sphere, into our founding documents. There's no way around that. And so teaching that in public schools was normative until, as you just said, Ryan Walters, 1962, you, you could see the shift, and they started to pretend, let's be clear, they started to pretend that you could have this good stuff without God. But ladies and gentlemen, you can't do that. It's like saying you could have physics without math. Um, you cannot do physics without math. You cannot do liberty and America without these founding ideas. You don't have to like the founding ideas. You don't have to be a Christian but you have to be aware of the history behind it. And again, I wrote about it in my book, If You Can Keep It, because I saw it, this is like, this needs to be understood by every American or we're dead. You know, when you were talking earlier about there's been an agenda. Uh, and again, folks, you need to trace this intellectually. Everybody can understand this, that if you take God out of the picture and you say, we're gonna take God out of the picture, what follows is a nightmare. What follows is human beings are not made in the image of God. There's no right or wrong. Uh, the idea of liberty is just something we made up. All of this stuff follows from atheism. So what you have is a woke agenda pretending that you could be against racism and be an atheist. But if you're an atheist, you, you, you don't believe that God made us equal in his image. You believe that we evolved randomly out of the primordial soup, and therefore maybe some races are you know, more equal than others. So they're gaslighting us. They're pretending that the secular view 
can give us all the stuff that we like, and we have to be real clear. We have to understand that it can't, and that, that's why I'm just excited, Ryan, that you in Oklahoma, it needs to happen around the country, are pushing back. And you know, and you see it in, they don't want a fair exchange of ideas. Uh, the radical left knows they don't win that battle, right? And this is why, again, you know, you've seen the success of so many conservatives, um, you know, now in, in talk radio or, or, or um, you know, writing books, things like this. And again, your successes speak for themselves. But you know what? There's logic to it. It makes sense. People connect with it. And so one of the things we did here in Oklahoma, we have launched and made Prager University available in every school in the state and for every parent um, to make it available. And again, it's, it's guess what? It's a different perspective. It actually is based in facts. There's no left-wing ideology. I know, Eric, the left has lost their minds here. And it just goes to show you, just showing students, you know, a, a five-minute, ten-minute video about Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Christopher Columbus, to really flesh out a fact-based understanding of these people who have been incredibly influential in American history, the left doesn't want it. They don't. Not even five minutes do they want kids exposed. And we're going to continue to make sure we get good curriculum in front of our kids. We just recently told our math book uh, textbook publishers uh, that, guess what? We expect you to teach math. If there's any kind of CRT, social emotional learning, or any more of this left wing nonsense in there, you're not going to work in the state of Oklahoma. And we had eight textbook publishers pull out of the process. Um, I'm going, well, you know what? If that if that standard's too high for you, go out to California, go out to New York. You're not going to work in the state and stick word problems in front of kids in a math class and tell them that they they might be racist due to the color of their skin. It's absurd. We're going to focus on the basics. And this is where you notice that from the attacks that we're getting here in Oklahoma, we're right over the target. The left wing wants to fully control what's being said to your kids, and they want it to be indoctrination. They don't want there to be a factually based discussion. I was just in uh, Illinois in Chicago. I spoke at an Illinois Family Institute event, um, and Dr. Erwin Lutzer was there. Uh, he has written about the rise of the Nazis. Obviously, I've written about that. But um, somebody asked a question. Uh, and I couldn't really answer the question because, you know, I don't know everything there is to know about uh, what happened uh, in the early days of the Nazis in Germany. But Erwin Lutzer was there and he said that in the textbooks, when the Nazis took power, they would embed in the math problems this Nazi ideology, uh, you know, and they would kind of be indoctrinating the kids through math. This is what is happening in America today. In other words, you're asking teachers just to teach, you know, teach that kid to play piano, teach him how to do math, teach him how to do a, a little science, teach him how to, like, basic stuff. But they have an ideology, and that's what they're pushing. They're using education to push ideology. They care about the ideology more than they do about the basics. Now, i got to ask you, Ryan, I mean, uh, you know, for folks who don't live in Oklahoma, I tell most people, you really should homeschool your kids. Sam Sorbo, uh, if people want resources, go to samsorbo.com. But it seems to me in a place like Oklahoma, there is hope for the public schools because of folks like you. Hey, look, you know, and, and I heard that just a few weeks ago, you know, as I'm traveling around the state, I have folks that say, look, I've actually put my kids back in public school because of the work that you're doing here. I know that you're you're fighting back against this woke agenda. And this is what we've got to do. Look, we have the best homeschool law in the country, by the way. We fully encourage parents, if you're able, we want you to homeschool your kids. The government, we're not going to track you. We're not going to ask a bunch of questions. We're not going to make you turn in data to us. No, we want family units to be protected and encouraged to be the most influential um, uh part of a kid's life other than their faith and the role that that plays. And so what we do, and I tell our team this, everything we do should be to strengthen the family unit. We absolutely, if you can homeschool your kids, we want to allow you to do that. We want you to choose a private school or a Christian school if that's what meets the needs of your child best. And we want to make sure if you send your kids to a public school, they're not facing any kind of woke indoctrination. There's no teacher's union bullying you around. 